This Swedish camouflage is making Ukrainian vehicles nearly invisible. Together with the Swedish CV-90 armored personnel carrier, Barracuda Camo is giving Ukrainian units an edge. Privyet Druzy, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of both the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force, and today we're seeing how Ukraine is putting Barracuda Camo to good use. But first, I have a degree in international relations, speak bad Russian, and love analyzing military technology. When you subscribe, you help me add my voice to the chorus of Ukraine supporters. Okay, let's jump in. The concept of camouflage has been around for, well, as long as animals and insects have, really. Aristotle commented about the color changing characteristics of an octopus, and later, Charles Darwin had a thing or two to say about it also. In the West, though, military camouflage finally came into its own about the same time that long-range rifles made their debut. But it wasn't until the early 20th century that camo became widely adopted across Europe and North America. A lot of camo advancements around this time were thanks to experiments by naturalist Abbott Thayer, dubbed the father of camouflage. In his 1909 book, Concealing Coloration in the Animal Kingdom, that became essential reading for generals and strategists at the time. French academics also studied the effectiveness of camo in combat in the 1910s, and from then on it was game on, just in time, for World War II. Understanding that vision is the primary sense of orientation in humans, camo is designed to deceive the human eye by countershading, preventing casting shadows, or disruption of outlines. As technology evolved, so too did camo. In the modern era, some textiles can provide concealment from infrared sensors. Other high-tech stealth coatings can make a vehicle nearly invisible to radar. Now, two products coming out of Sweden have been combined on the battlefields of Ukraine, two widespread acclaim from soldiers in the field, I might add. First, the Swedish APC Combat Vehicle 90, or CV-90, is a beast in combat, which just might give the American Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle a run for its money. According to the Deputy Commander of Ukraine's 21st Brigade, quote, The armor is the most important thing. Our vehicle withstood direct hits from lancets, various first-person drones, and a 120mm shell hit to the back, and the vehicle withstood everything, end quote. Another Ukrainian commander said, quote, The vehicle is a tractor, comfortable, maneuverable, energetic. The vehicle is just a lively one. There is air conditioning. You can listen to the radio, end quote. Many other anecdotes are coming out of Ukraine about the CV-90 survivability. But the real magic comes when the CV-90 is combined with Sweden's Barracuda Mobile Camouflage System, or MCS. Not to be confused with the Swedish Barracuda Camouflage pattern that was developed in the late 1970s for soldiers' uniforms. The pattern was never officially adopted. Not gonna lie, it's kinda cool looking. Barracuda is a proprietary textile made by Saab that soldiers apply over a military vehicle's armor. First and foremost, its design uses a non-glossy structure pattern and colors to enable a vehicle to blend in with its surroundings and avoid visual detection, much like you would expect camouflage to do. For Arctic or cold environments, Barracuda has a high ultraviolet reflectance. This image from Saab does a good job of showing the difference between a fabric with high UV reflectance versus one that absorbs UV. Barracuda also has protection against near-infrared and short-wave infrared, making it much more difficult to detect with night vision due to the fabric's ability to match the spectral reflections of its environment. It also protects against thermal infrared by using materials that interact with the surroundings through convection, reflection, radiation, and insulation. This greatly reduces the heat signature of the vehicle underneath. But the most heavily guarded property of Barracuda is its ability to turn its vehicles into a stealth APC. 
that are nearly invisible to radar. The fabric protects against synthetic aperture radar that generate high resolution images as well as fire control radars and target seeking missiles. According to one Ukrainian CV-90 vehicle commander, quote, thanks to the Barracuda coat, which we now only have on Swedish equipment, the vehicle is 70% less visible on the thermal camera. It's just gray, like a padded cold car, end quote. There are also benefits beyond its incredible camouflage properties. By lowering the internal vehicle temperature, the MCS minimizes the energy needed for vehicle cooling reducing total fuel consumption in the field. In addition, the fabric reduces dust clouds from forming as the vehicle moves over the terrain. According to Saab, this minimizes the service intervals for filters and for the engine. The best part is that slapping this stuff on Ukrainian vehicles is only the beginning. Assuming more is forthcoming from Sweden, nothing is stopping Ukraine from using this fabric on dismounted infantry positions air defense, crew-served weapons, and command and control centers. Actually, that's not the best part. This is. This miracle fabric allows vehicle crew members or soldiers under a version of Barracuda to still use their radio frequency devices. This particular camo is printed with a material that acts as a low-pass filter, allowing selected low radio and GPS frequencies, roughly 0 to 0 0.5 and 1.2 to 1.6 gigahertz respectively to pass either way through the camouflage netting while protecting against the higher frequencies of electromagnetic waves used by radar systems, typically from 8 to 12 gigahertz. Oh, and they have a version for maritime use with the same properties. Imagine Ukraine's growing uncrewed surface drone fleet sporting Barracuda. I'm not sure what those mad scientists are doing over at Saab, but this stuff is the apex of current camouflage technology. Just one step under actual invisibility cloaks. In practice, this means Russian soldiers must get much closer to Ukrainian positions before they can detect a CV-90. And by then, well, it'll be too late for the Russian unit. When you learn about new technologies like this, coming out of research and development at Western Allies, it makes one realize just how far ahead the West is technologically over Russia. Now, I'm a tech guy, so forgive me if I'm gushing over this incredible material. I understand the risks of relying too much on technology, especially in war. But you have to admit, this stuff could be extremely useful if deployed across Ukraine instead of just on Ukraine's 85 donated CV-90s. Okay, that's it for now. Maybe clickety-click that like button if you enjoyed the video. Otherwise, hit me up on Substack or Medium for in-depth written analysis. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraine.